Welcome to the Mystophonia Podcast. This is Season 4, Episode 3. My name is Adil Ahmad, and I have Misophonia. This is a show where I chat with people who are also dealing with misophonia. Today I'm talking to Julie, a mother, a social worker, and a misophone living in the UK. A really fascinating conversation where we really get into how it affects relationships, growing up, and now with partners as adults. That includes the shame and guilt we feel of being a burden on others, but also feelings of being unlovable. She also speaks to her work as a social worker and how she's able to help families where she observes some, observes some possible misophonia. Find us on social media at Misophonia Podcast on Instagram and Facebook or Misophonia Show on Twitter. You can find all the links on the website misophoniapodcast.com and even contact me from there if you like. All right, let's get to this, this week's episode with Julie. Julie, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Adil. So, um, yeah, we were talking about earlier, like, um, uh, you, well, I've had a number of people from the, from the UK. Um, so, uh, do you want, you want to tell the audience, I guess, yeah, where, where you're from and kind of maybe what, what you do? Okay. I'm from a city in the north of England called Liverpool. Um, and pe- people probably know Liverpool as the birthplace of the Beatles. That's what we're known for right. mostly. <laughs> um, that won't go I'm, away. You'll be you'll stuck. You're stuck with that <laughs> for a long time. I think. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know what? We're good for a few more things, but um, yeah, yeah. That's, but mainly around the world, that's what we're known for. Um, and at the moment, I work as it's it's something called early help. It's a little bit like social work. Mm-hmm. So it's it's work and support and families in in the um, you know vulnerable families in the area, and I've done this probably for about fourteen years. So you know mm-hmm. this type of work. And prior to that, I worked in um, in I actually worked in an office, and I don't know how I did it. It was an office with a with probably about fifty people in. Open office. I, yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And now I can't sit in an office with one person typing. So it, this is obviously a trigger that's developed over time, as they mm-hmm. as they tend to do. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Um, I have I'm a mother of two young adults. One's twenty two and one's nineteen, and I live with them and my two dogs. <laughs> so that's that's me. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Um... And, uh, well, I guess maybe I should first ask, like, uh, were you living with them uh, before COVID or was this kind of like, uh, did you kind of have to all bunk together for the past year? Um, well, do you know what? I'd say, yeah, we, we did. In the first few weeks of, of lockdown, we literally were locked in when we we couldn't go anywhere. So I, I worked from home and my two children, well, my son was furloughed, so he didn't go out. Yeah. And neither did, neither did my daughter. She didn't go to work either. And at the time, I had a partner who I lived with. Um, we just recently separated, just in December. Um, I, I think probably a mixture of lots of reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Misophonia being a big one for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were, we were all cooped up together and it was hard. I just spent most of the day with plugs in, you know, doing work at my laptop or just yeah. wearing the earplugs. Um, and, you know, the summer, the summer time is a, a big, it's, it's, it's a hard time for me, I've got to be honest. And, and I read and, and listen to a lot of people who say exactly the same, just because of like outdoor noise. Um, mm. Yeah, you know, like people like to enjoy the garden, which is, great um but i can't do that because of because other people are enjoying their garden it's a big trigger for me right everybody's outside on the patio or walking around or kids are playing and um... yeah do you know what a deal it's not even not kids it's just it's really sad this is like this has only developed i think the past three or four years it's just other people talking music mm-hmm. um do you know when people eat outside and the the, yeah. the the um the cutlery on the the bowls and stuff, 
and and do you know what i don't blame anyone for doing it it's like what can you do that it's, it's what your garden's for and we had some gorgeous weather last summer it was like scorching for um for weeks mm-hmm. and i just was cooped up in the the in my room and i literally have to close the blinds and the curtains because it's like when there's a sound comes from outside it's almost like i don't even want to see the area and where it's coming from it's it's bizarre but but it is bizarre yeah. <laughs> so yeah because we yeah right that's that's interesting because yeah if you we have the temptation of uh well, a lot of us have the temptation. Well, we give that glare at uh, whoever it is, but then, uh, yeah. then that just kind of like becomes a rabbit hole where you're like, now you're even more acutely aware of aware of where it's coming from, and uh, so yeah, I can see how you'd want to maybe just retreat. Um, and and just... you know what? Sorry to interrupt. No, I, I I will go outside, but I have to be armed with. Uh, maybe I'll put a pair of earplugs in, and then I'll put like the ear phones over just to, to ensure that I can't hear anything. And you know, I'm actually embarrassed by that. I'm embarrassed that I have to do it. So I just, half the time, I just avoid doing that. Um, okay, so do you just, so um, so wearing so wearing that kind of, I call it armor as well, like wearing yeah. um, uh, headphones, you, you, you kind of feel embarrassed kind of being seen with the uh, headphones all the time or um no do you know or... what it's not even not outside in the street or going oh, through gotcha. or like that what i mean is you know in at home yeah and, and i feel like people look at me and and this it this just isn't true at all but you, you have it's your perception of things isn't it because it makes you think irrationally right i, I would say that if my children are looking at me and think of why she got them on it makes them think about it then and i don't want them to do that i don't want them to be thinking of me triggered all the time do, do you understand what i mean i totally do yeah i mean that, that's come yeah. up in the podcast is like you don't want to draw it you don't want uh yeah well there's that there's multiple things there's that kind of shame and guilt of like always bringing this up and and kind of feeling like we're burdening other people um and, and then, but there's also like, well, some people have said that, um, um, you know, m- seeing other people notice you be bothered, like just adds to your own burden and kind of is its own trigger in a way. Um, so you just kind of would rather people just, um, n- not draw attention to it basically. Yeah. Well, I'd yeah. rather not draw attention to myself. So I'd, I'd, I'd right. just rather, they enjoyed the garden and I just yeah. did my own thing. Um, and you know what, Adil, you sort of come to accept it, don't you? You, you just accept a lot of things, and and I I do accept a lot of things about my life that mm-hmm. it, it's 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 at times it's going to be difficult. Um, but I'm not saying it's a walk in the park either, because it isn't. <laughs> because right. when when you don't externalize it, you internalize it, don't you? And then you, you don't know how that's manifesting um, to other people really as well. I think, to you know, going talking about my relationship a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that probably that that shame. You just nailed it there when you said that. You do carry a lot of shame and a lot of burden, and I think you just don't want to be seen as this miserable, um, <laughs> depressed person who was triggered all the time. And right. it and it's just. It's probably how it comes across, but you can't help it. Well, I mean, one thing, I mean, fortunately these days, like, fortunately, at least now it has a name. Um, and, you know, there are articles and obviously and that's kind of one of the reasons for this podcast is to kind of have um, a place where you can point people to and say, hey, look, there are people who, um, you know, they're going through this in their own lives and talking about it one on one with other people. And um, and uh, so these days, luckily, um yeah you know just just have putting a name on it and bring it up in a conversation can kind of help like have you have you tried to do that with uh with your family members um and um do they like do they know what it is yeah definitely did you know i i remember the day that i discovered it and i was just elated 
were you did you feel the same oh, yeah oh yeah. absolutely I, a lot of people are like you hear about it and then you're just googling it constantly you, you don't yeah. even sleep it's just like yeah yeah it was like um three days i i, I couldn't come down off this high mm-hmm. and then um, because i just thought that i was obviously thought i was going mad and i'd be the only person with it because when you try to explain it it's a little bit sounds bizarre um, yeah. but then when i i, I googled it and found it i think it was probably around 2010 something like that yeah um, and i just ran i drove straight Drove, drove straight down to my mum's house and told her and I said, look mum, this is what this was all my life and she was upset really because she she sort of understood when I was younger but didn't as well didn't get, get it to the extreme because I'm like 49, I'm nearly 50 so if you think back to when I was young like 8 and 9 when it started um, I, 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 I did try to say, I think, but mainly I just kept it to myself. I, I don't know whether it was, a, if that's like an age thing or, or nowadays children would, would say, you know, stop doing that or stop. But I, and I sort of didn't say that as, as, as I don't remember ever saying that. I just remember actually being just so um God, so wound up, so triggered. Um I'll I'll tell you what my first trigger was. It was we had a piano. We had two mm-hmm. rooms and we had like what what you call a parlour. So we had a piano in the parlour. And I've got two older brothers and they were just really musical and taught themselves the piano. Uh, and that piano just became I think that was probably my first trigger around about seven and eight. And I just hated it. And, mm. you know, he, we'd, we'd sit down to tea and in, I knew that they would get up to, to want to go after tea. One of them would get up and go and play. So while while I was eating tea, I, I was just thinking, oh, they're going to go in there. And and it was just, it was horrendous, really. Because, do you know, the, I don't even think there was such a thing as earbuds, so I didn't know about them. So I used to just spend a lot of my childhood with my fingers and ears. But like really pressed in hard, you know. Yeah. Um, and it was just, I, I ended up one day, and it was a lovely piano, and I got a stick, and I just bashed the piano, every key, a chip, the edge of every key. Can you imagine? Wow. Uh, I know. And how I explain that to my family, I just don't know. Um, I got like told off. Um. <laughs> to say the least, but I, I, I just, I just lost it one day. Just thought yeah. I can't do this. Is making me miserable. This like, like I really just didn't want to be here sometimes. And I remember that as like a young child. Um, and then just more triggers started. And you know, bless me, mum. It was her when she like chewed gum, mm-hmm. and she yeah. chewed gum along, and that said. Um, you know, very common, isn't it, for us? Absolutely, yeah. Parents, um, and oh, yeah, gum chewing, um, yeah. eating, um, yeah, yeah, really interesting. And, um, so, was your was your mom the first trigger, or, or sorry, the piano was the first trigger, right? That that whole yeah. that whole ritual. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, around what age did you um, did you try to destroy the piano? <laughs> I think I must have been about eight. Okay, um, so it had been going on for like a maybe a year or two. Um, yeah, yeah. Did your parent? Did anyone in the family notice? You know, you're you're sitting there with, at tea, just kind of, um, you know, with your fingers in your ears, um, probably glaring at people. Um, did it ever? Did anyone ever ask? Like, you know, what's what's wrong? Well, do you know what? A deal food e- eating at the table didn't bother me at all. It, it, at the, it, okay. Yeah. No, so. It, and and it still doesn't to this day touch wood. It's not one of my triggers. Okay, I'm gonna um, knock on wood too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just was thinking, Julie, why did you just say that? But it didn't. It was chewing gum, um, did my mum. Yeah. Uh, but when uh, what I mean is when I put my fingers in the ears, I just go upstairs to my room and just put my fingers okay. in. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so 
so when I was going to sleep, like the television then downstairs starts to be a trigger. So I'd, I'd just sleep every night with my fingers and knees and my arms were pain. I remember it. Um, and I, I do remember asking my parents to turn the television down, but that's not such an uncommon request, really. To, can you turn the telly down right. a bit? Say, um, but it it was it was other things that say we'd be lying in bed and I'd share a room with my sister and she'd have her little radio on, which is just lovely. She, she used to love listening to the music and um, going to sleep. But I, I'd just be saying, turn it off, turn it off. And sometimes she wouldn't even have it on, you know. But I'd, I'd imagine that I could hear it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I feel like I yeah. sometimes I have that sensation as well when I'm, when I'm, when my ears, can, especially when it happens regularly, you're probably, yeah. your probably ears kind of filling in the space, maybe, or your yeah. brain. Yeah. And I think you know when you're expecting it, then it, you sort of can't imagine it. I think. Um, but yeah, and then I, I, I discovered those little foam earbuds, which I just thought was my birthday and Christmas all rolled into one. So I just lived with them, and then. Yeah. Um, like with me, me other brother, he 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 was in a band, and I, it was just like I was like, oh thanks, you know, looking up to the sky, saying thanks for that, because he he'd have his friends around and they'd play the musical instruments, and mm -hmm. he'd he'd have a keyboard, but what he'd do is he'd put his headphones in, so you couldn't hear the actual key, you couldn't hear the music, but you could just hear him bashing on the keys. Right, right. So I don't know whether that was worth or not, but um. So just every night was like really, really hard living at home, going up into my teenage years. Um, computers, the, the, you know, the old Amstrad computers. And, yeah, I was going to say back in the 80s uh, yeah. and 90s, those keyboards were not not, <laughs> not very, I mean, it was all clickety-clackety. Um, <laughs> so, and, and me dad would like to sit there playing games on that. And it was, I just, you know what? I could never sit in the living room with my family. My mum used to knit, you know, she used to knit um, clothes and jumpers and stuff like that. Yeah. And the knitting needle together, I couldn't be there with that. Right. And it was sort of like the running joke in the family, but actually wasn't funny. <laughs> it wasn't funny for me. It was torture, but it was, people used to laugh at it. I don't think, uh, I don't think anyone in my family actually got it and um, the understood. It, it was sort of like a joke, but not in an evil way. They wouldn't laugh. They used to just say, oh, our Julie can't sit around us. Um, but I couldn't. And it was a shame, really. Because I missed yeah. out just, just sitting, you know, with my family. Yeah, no, I, I know. I, I, totally, I totally know. This, this is a whole other thing, is, uh, which I try to find out about, is that, that what, you know, what was the what, that distance that gets created? Um, you know, some people have, like, really damaged relationships where they they just kind of like it's not just the distance it's like um uh, just baggage and they can't really um they can't repair all, all that lost time because there's all those there's a lot there were a lot of fights um along the way it sounds like at least you know there weren't there weren't too many kind of real fights but there must have been distance that was created where um you know your family was probably participating in things together and you maybe kind of felt a little bit like an outsider or am i just reading too much into it no that definitely happens as well that's definitely, I, I could just hear, um, I could hear them having a laugh, you know, downstairs, and I'd just think, oh, it's just, it, it's rubbish that I can't be there. They probably just thought I wanted to be separate. Um, yeah. But it, and and I, I did miss out a lot, I reckon. Um, did you go on trips you know, together, uh, you know, outside of the house? Um, yeah, traveling? we used to. Yeah, we'd go on, we, we went on like holiday every year, you know, we stayed in, in in the UK. So we'd go on caravan holidays and stuff like that. And I was fine. Um, <laughs> my mum used to snore, so that's another thing. I, my poor mum, if she listens to this, she'll be more surprised. But I'd, like I say, I used to just put my fingers in my ears every night in bed um, and, and just pray that nothing else there and then. Well, at least your me. brothers are. At least your brothers don't have their drum kits and pianos and uh, keyboards <laughs> yeah. on vacation. So <laughs> they very really came with us, which was good. <laughs> yeah. What did your um? 
what did your mom say then when you when you told her ten years ago what it was? Did it uh, did it caught, did it bring any kind of closure on anything? Like you know, help kind of uh, explain things? Well, do you know what she was? She was like, um, she was a bit sad and upset that I'd that it had been that difficult for me. But it also, I could say then, I could say, Mum, you know, um, chewing gum is a big trigger for me. So I could say that to her then. So now she she doesn't have it. And if, say, I go to the house and she's got it in, she whips it out really quickly. And she, you know, she she's dead thoughtful like that now. Um, and my sister is exactly the same. They, they, they really understand it. And they would never... Um, try to they, they, they'd never forget or they, they'd never try to trigger me on purpose or yeah. you know, be thoughtless about it so uh, that that's the real good thing about it I think that it, it made that easier and I could have those conversations with them. That's great so that warmth is kind of coming back that maybe you had last sub early early on um, and does that, does that kind of help like that must reduce the stress for you right and just, just kind of sometimes knowing that other people are aware and at least trying can kind of get you through some some of the accidental triggers at least yeah, for me you know, i i totally agree it, it's it, it i think it lessens the stress when you know that people are trying to help um and if because you know what deal i i just tell everyone now if i ever find myself in a situation so say for example if I'm in work um and keyboard typing didn't trigger me right till about around 2012 and then it started to trigger me so i had to tell my boss i thought i'm gonna tell that straight away i'm not gonna sit and suffer in this yeah. in that environment and i do believe that wherever i go if I have to be in a, in a certain place for a certain length of time, I would address it. I've been on, on in training um, situations and someone's got the keyboard out and I've just had the words with the, with the, like, with the training leader that I can't sit here. Um, if that continues and, and it, it sounds awful, but you sort of have to have an element of control, don't you, to deal? With your surroundings that comes up a lot too yeah just have it yeah. that have control of your environment kind of is one thing that kind of helps as you're an adult you feel more assertive to be able to do that and control control um, um the, control the environment right whereas when you're a kid like you know you got to have tea with your family there's no way out yeah. other, uh, except going to your room uh, how did um it was so when you do bring it up with like uh, training sessions or your boss whatever like what is um, what is your reaction? First of all, it's amazing you're doing that because, uh, you know, the other people I've talking to, um, spoken to from the UK, you know, they've, some of them have talked about how the, the culture in the UK is more just kind of bite your lip and, and kind of like, uh, don't talk about that kind of stuff. Um, um, is that kind of, what kind of reaction, um, have you gotten? And, uh, can you maybe speak to kind of the, the general culture on this kind of stuff in, in the UK? Well, you know, this place where I work, I've, I've worked here since 2007. So, my boss at the time, because I've got a different manager now, but she was just brilliant. And she just, she said, okay, let's see what we can do. And at first, there wasn't anywhere for me to go. So, I just, I was basically just moved around the building. I have to sit in the kitchen sometimes with, with my laptop. Um, and it wasn't ideal, but she she tried her best for me um and also now with with i've got a new manager she I've, I've got my own office and i i don't know i've just been allowed to do that i i, I really i really couldn't comment on the culture i took what I, I would not apply for a job now a deal where it was an open office i just wouldn't right do it. yeah um which which restricts you an awful lot because you think oh I could do that job and I might like that but I, I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't put myself through it if if they said or or if I did 
I would, I'd, I'd actually say it once I got the job. I'd say before we start, can I just tell you that this is the situation? I, I wouldn't go into a job. I, I'm just, I wouldn't put myself in that situation because I just think I don't want to be that stressed in my life, I, not for a job. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I could not sort of comment on the culture, but you know. I read a lot on, on, you know, the Misophonia Treatment and Management Facebook page. Yeah. And I read that an awful lot, and I think it must be awful for your boss not to understand and to just tell you to suck it up. It must be terrible. So I I consider myself really, really lucky, actually. Yeah, no, and that's interesting uh, that you said that you wouldn't uh, wouldn't take a job that that you might, um, that would be in an open office, because... Um, you know, there's somebody I was talking to who is doing research on misophonia in the work environment. And there have been people who are, who are thinking about like, uh, creating like a handbook or something for employers because I feel like, uh, I think from their side, they might be missing out on a lot of, um, you know, good, good talent if people are, you know, going to avoid, uh, working for them because, because of their environment. So I feel like, um, employers in for their benefit should make things easier for misophones and other people with uh, you know these kinds of issues. Um, so, yeah, yeah well, hopefully, I agree. hopefully that that improves in the future. Yeah, I, I listened. I, I think I listened to a bit of that this morning while I was out walking dogs, um, and I thought that's really, really good what she's doing because it, you know, a, a lot of a lot of jobs now. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of it's online, a lot of it's off space, and people hot death, so there might be three or four in an office. And so I, I think what she's what she's doing is brilliant, that lady. I, I forgot her name now. Um, uh, I think Olivia. you're talking about Olivia. Olivia. Yeah, Olivia, yeah. yeah. She's just over in Germany. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I listened to her this morning, yeah. And I thought that's, that's really good. And you know, the more stuff like that, the more awareness raised. Um, oh, absolutely! I think I think yeah. imagine if uh, imagine if we just penetrated the the uh, the human resources of like large companies. I mean, if they just yeah. posted some, if they just sent an email to the whole company, that would automatically that would hit millions of people. So of course, you know, yeah. just uh, that little thing could could uh, be a big inflection point. So, it could um, snowball, couldn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. be really good. Yeah, maybe uh, going back to kind of like your your kind of your current situation, your family. Uh, I did we touch on like. Uh, we, what your kids have have thought of uh, you know as you you know when you told them and how it's been since like are they also just as uh sensitive as your uh your sisters and your and your mom like i say i don't try to make a big deal out of it so i'll just i'll just sort of i, I won't mention it i'll try not to mention it when i'm triggered but last week i it was the first time and i feel like i really let myself down i had a bit of a uh anxiety attack or a misophonia attack or whatever you want to call it and my daughter was there she was in the house and what it was there was a little bit of work going on in the garden behind where we live and um i thought it was just a little bit of garden work it'll be and you sort of tell yourself that don't you if you can tell yourself it won't be long and it's not going to last forever then you can sort of get through but when i looked out of the window I saw that um, we were building like an extension. So I thought this, this is going to be here for months. Um, and I just lost it. Mm. And, and, and I don't, do, honestly, I don't do it that often, but I just had this overwhelming anger. And I just, I, I, you know, just slammed the, the bathroom window and ran downstairs and I just, mm. I was just furious in the kitchen um, and I was like, I don't believe it. I was screaming all over the house and she'd come running down and she'd, what's wrong? And I was just lying on the couch and and she was saying, mum, what's wrong, what's wrong? And so I just tried to explain to her, but I was just crying so much at the time. And and this hasn't happened for ages, this, but it was just the thought of that building work going on for months. I thought, this is just going to kill me. so she was she was like, it's your mindset, it's your mindset. And then 
I just I calmed down. I was saying, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean to, to react like that. And she said, later on in the, in the evening, she texted me. She said, Mama, I didn't know. She said, I can't stop thinking about you, and I didn't know that it affected you that much. So she didn't know, you see. She knows that sounds trigger me, but not to that extent. Um, And, like, my son, I, I didn't really speak to him about it, to be honest, because I tried to hide it, but you know what? I don't want them to know about it too much because I, I, I don't want them to do that. <laughs> and I know that sounds mad, but and, and touch wood, I, I'd say they probably escaped it, but that's why I don't really talk about it that much. Um, I, 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 I'd say I did with my previous, with my partner, and he was, he, he was quite good to an extent because, you know, um. Obviously, there was the things that he did, and, and this is the awful thing about being in, in a relationship with someone that when they're your trigger, it's just I, I, I just think it's awful. I commend any couple that stay together, I, I've got to be honest, because when they're your trigger and, and they just do, do normal things, and to be honest, a deal sometimes like my partner would do something and my my kids would make the same noise and they wouldn't trigger me but he did and and that's that's bizarre um but i i, I do read also that some people say the same they can sort of they can watch the money but not another person um and i just think that in a relationship it's so difficult to to um, to get through really and this is why I, 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 I don't talk about it too much with, with my kids but me do, as I say I'm going back to my daughter and she's seen me um, and then the, the following day because that has happened I had another one in where something was going on outside and my sister called me and I had another full on meltdown and do you know what a deal this is the truth I still feel that today in my stomach like that that nervousness because I, it, it's like it stayed with me that anxiety from that stayed. from that particular trigger or yeah from yeah. just from the whole thing yeah i just feel like it's, it's lived there and i just need to get rid of that somehow um but yeah so and and, me, and to be honest my kids don't really trigger me <laughs> my daughter might sometimes if she's on a she she does a lot of Zoom calls, and you know the noise from the um, laptop when I can hear the, the other person on the laptop speaking. Right, right. Yeah, that that's a trigger. So bless yeah. that she just puts her earphones in. Um, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So right. If there's no earphones, then that <laughs> yeah that that kind of laptop speaker. Uh, uh, the choppiness. Yeah, can definitely. Yeah. Be. Yeah. Do, do you get that as well? Yeah, it's not definitely not my favorite, so I, I definitely try to. Uh, it's not. It's not like a <laughs> particularly a mouth sound, but it's something I'll be like, okay, it's time to find something to do in another room. Yeah, <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no, I mean, it, 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 you hit a lot of points that uh, um, um, you know. I mean, uh, and uh, yeah, that a lot. Of, they're not uncommon. I mean, um, in the the whole question of like. Uh, uh, how much they like talk to our kids about it because they're not wanting them to develop it not first of all not being triggered by them as much for some reason not wanting to talk about it to to save them from maybe developing because we don't know what's what really causes this um yeah these are these are things i've taught yeah I've, that have come up in conversations at like the miss funny convention and and other um uh, other episodes so you're yeah you're, what you're feeling is totally totally normal um and and it's yeah it's great that you're that you're that they're not triggering you so <laughs> yeah, um, did your um going to your um uh maybe yeah maybe i don't know maybe your partner has how long were you with this most recent partner was it was it the uh um it was it your uh, father of your children or was it uh um more more recent partner no he, he's not the children's father so i, I was with him for seven years and I, 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 we did, we did discuss it 
very early on in the relationship. Right. So you would have known what Miss Funio was by that yes. point, right? Because you heard about yeah. it 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was actually with another partner. <laughs> I was with another partner at the time because he was a trigger as well. And it, it actually stems from sort of like an, an argument um, that, and, and I just thought, right, something, I've, I've, I've got to find out what this is and, and I Googled, I Googled mm. it. And so it was a, like an explanation then and it was a huge relief. Do you remember what you Googled? Not to, uh, I, oh, I'm going to come back to your the partner too. I'm just, I'm just always curious what people type into the Google box when they're, uh, when they're trying to figure this out. Do you know what? I, I, I just, I can't remember. Yeah. It must have been like something like, I hate right, the right. sounds or something like that. Yeah, and then yeah, it yeah. just came up and I was like clicking away and I just thought, oh, this is just, honestly, it was, it was elation that I felt. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt this elation and it, it was Misophonia UK, I think, um, that it, it just it came up with this paragraph and I kept reading it over and over. And yeah, and it's like, this is my biography. <laughs> yeah, this, this is me. Wow. And then there was comments underneath from loads of people. There's like a thousand or something like yeah. that. Um, and I, I was just, I was over the moon because of course I'm not mad. And uh -huh. then you went to your partner, and what yeah, happened then? I just said, look at this. Um, yeah. I, but, do you know, I don't think I, I, I don't think I explained to him or, or the partner that I've just separated with the, to the extent that how, how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. and, and do you know what? I've, I've sort of revisited a lot of stuff over the past few weeks and I thought I thought to myself you know in relationships when you start noticing a few cracks and you think right we're going to work on this and I'm going to work on it and the type of person that I am I, that that's what I want to do but you know mm -hmm. I think misophonia just plays a huge part in me not working on 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 those on resolving or fixing those issues because of course okay I've got this you trigger me um, I'll be better off probably on my own and you'll be better off without me because I feel like I become like a controlling person when when I have to control sounds I don't like who I become and mm. I'm probably not the person that they met when they met me do, do you get what I mean Adil? Yeah do you know do you know when you meet someone and, and you've got loads of fun and like, everything's right. lovely and and then they begin to trigger you after like a couple of years or however long it is and then i don't i'm speaking for me here i don't feel like i i was that person then i feel like i was always anticipating a noise or looking you know that glare giving that glare or sometimes dread you know i, I don't want to go home in case He's doing this, or and, right. and and I think that instead of working through my relationship, I just thought, and and I genuinely do think this, they'd be, probably be better off without me. And if if they're not there in my home, then I'll I'll be more peaceful. I'll be able to put my plugs in whenever I want. Um, I'll be able to, you know go to bed because the television downstairs has always been a trigger for me so I've never gone to bed first um so I thought I think oh, I can go to bed when I want just and I think it's a real shame actually that from my point of view I think misophonia has probably played a ma more of a, a bigger part in my relationships breaking down than the other person has actually realized Gotcha. Yeah. So it's not not necessarily the uh, a collection of triggers, but just the um, um, your kind of um, realization, or I don't want to say realization because it seems like it makes it seem um, like it definitely is kind of you. When, when I don't, you know, it's 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 not something you're doing on purpose, but like you're talking about like how 
Well, in, in a lot of relationships, there's that initial kind of honeymoon period, and then you start to find these cracks, um, whether, even if you don't have misphonia. Mm -hmm. um, but for, you're thinking like, you're, you're, it's, it comes out of that kind of guilt and shame where you, maybe you feel like, uh, yeah, like you said, you're not, you don't feel like the same person because you're, you're doing those glares and the, the, um, or that cycle is kind of building. And so you, you feel like, um, maybe it's not worth fixing those other things because it's kind of inevitable. Um, the, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And also, the, I just think, imagine, what I always think is, imagine living with me and having to be controlled mm. and, and just, that they want to do just a normal thing and I, I have to control that sound. So I always think, and you know what, Adil, I'm not being a victim here or anything like that. I'm just, I just think that. Whereas before I was, you know, sort of like when happy go lucky, I think it just turns you into a person that you're really not. Um, and I sometimes think, I don't know, this, is, this might be going a little bit extreme, but I think sometimes it makes it makes me feel unlovable with it. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean because you, you're always going to have your guard up. And so yeah. it's almost like um, nobody, very few people might, uh, if you always have your guard up, like it's hard for somebody to get in, you know, get in, um, mm -hmm. get inside. Um, and because they're always going to be hit with that reaction. And so it's... Um, whether it's true or not, they they might feel unlo uh, unloved. Um, yeah, yeah, and and I think what what you do is you tend you tend to demonize, don't you, the person that's making it because you're sort of like like disgust is is one of the triggers, isn't it? Yeah, disgust. Uh, you, yeah. You, sometimes your your brain your brain kind of um, your brain goes in the direction of like, well they're probably doing it on purpose. Like they're, they're obviously doing it on purpose. And especially if they know that what you have, then you feel like, Oh, well, I told them once they must, <laughs> they must be doing this on purpose to hurt me. Kind of thing is kind of where our, our minds go. Um, and you know what? It's just not true. Is it? It's really, no, just absolutely not. not. True. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, it's like the, the strangest thing um, ever. Like how, how this happens in your brain. Um, I, I just, never ever understand it i i think it, we we all accept it don't we all and and it's uh, it's not a well with me because i'm like you know I'm, i live a, i'm a healthy person um but i think what is this it's just a strange thing ever isn't yeah. it yeah it's uh it's it's going through re some research hopefully more and more but uh yeah i don't know it feels like it's it's like um you know, back from uh, our, our lizard brain where we had to react to any kind of like danger in the jungle. I feel like there's some kind of uh, leftover you know, extreme DNA malfunction <laughs> from that from that Maybe. time that's kind of like uh, um, misinterpreting stuff now. Um, yeah. So we're special, really, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we're, maybe it's, uh, maybe, maybe there, you know, maybe there's something coming in the future for the human race and we're just ahead of the curve genetically. So, um, that's kind of, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but you know what? I, I do a lot of work on, um, we, the, the job I do, because we work with families, we talk a lot about trauma. And you know, the ACE study, have you heard of the ACE study? No, I haven't. No, it, it's the adverse childhood experiences study. So it looks at like how a child develops in accordance with their environment and, and things that happen to them growing up and how their environment has affected their, their brain development and their development into to adults. Um, and you know, when I think about that, because there's a list of, of traumas that, that um, they talk about children going through. and. Mm -hmm. Do you know when I, I'm not saying misophonia is a trauma, but you know the reaction is 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 pretty traumatic. Your yeah. your response is 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 like a traumatic response. So, you know, like the rush of cortisol in, into your into your system and the fight or flight and the anticipation. But sometimes that's worse than the actual trigger. 
the anticipation. So you, you're constantly living with that in, in in your body. And I think that it, it's traumatic. And and we, we get the same um we get the same reactions as as, as trauma in, in our bodies. And sometimes I, I'm I'm not really au fait with it. There's a man that I, I absolutely love. His name's Gabor Massey. Don't know whether you've ever heard of him. I don't think so. No, do you know what? When you get a minute, just Google him because he's, yeah. he's amazing. Um, and he talks a lot about trauma and addiction and, and stuff. I think I think I'm actually addicted <laughs> to listening to him, ironically. But he, he talks a lot about how your childhood experiences shape who you are um, and how you have to adapt. Um, sometimes you, you have to adapt certain ways just to to actually function and to survive and I think we've all done that haven't we you know as from 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 children I think we've all adapted um, oh absolutely to, probably in yeah. ways that we probably in ways that we don't even know because it started so early um there's probably we probably have uh, you're right I mean we probably feel there's probably trauma that we're feeling that seems normal to us but it's probably yeah. different um uh, and it's interesting that you said that because um, there have been at least two episodes. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of like commonalities between the episodes, but uh, two that were particularly striking were, um, uh, I think, um, two two people who are teenagers or maybe in college now who both uh, developed it after their um, uh, grandmother died, who they were very close to, and it was the funeral following where they started to get triggered. Really? And so, yeah. And so it, that just, it really, it just kind of like really resonated as a, I mean, it was, you know, definite childhood trauma. Um, and then that was the onset, like that, that, that the funeral right after. So, um, wow, that, 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 that's strange, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's, but it's almost like we've lived our own trauma it, we, because we've lived with this. Cause right. It's the same. It's the same responses that we have in the body. So we have the um, we, if we're triggered or and you know we're anticipating a trigger. I I certainly get like a pain in my stomach, um, and and when it, you're angry and upset and you start scared, to shake, yeah, yeah, like like I am. And sometimes I'm really really scared because of the noise that be, might be happening tomorrow and, and, and I'm scared the day before of the noise mm. um, so it's like all my, that's that's like that feels like a traumatic response to me and it's only what I read a little bit more about trauma that I real I realize this is this this feels very much like that and I'm not saying it's it's a traumatic event like um, you know, abuse or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not even saying it's on the same level. But my body reacts with a traumatic response, um, right. and and I don't know how other people might feel about that. But I definitely think there's like a similar experience going on there. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, especially the way you're describing it, the way the way what you feel. Have you ever um, contacted like a uh, seek like a uh, therapist or, or a psychiatrist maybe to just kind of like uh, um, talk about misophonia in particular? Yeah, I did, you know, I went to an audiologist in the, um, mm, mm -hmm. that, I think it was around about 2013-14 and he just wouldn't address the way of misophonia. He, he wouldn't speak about it. He, he would speak about hyperacusis. Yeah, right. I've heard he, of that. Yeah. Um, but he, he was a tinnitus expert, this man, and he would he just wouldn't speak about misophonia. Whether it's changed now, because that was like seven years ago, but yeah. he, he wouldn't talk about misophonia. And um, but you know what? He, I was having a bad day one day, and, and I said something, and he referred me to a psychiatrist. But I had like one one um, session with him, and he, he said, you know, you don't need to be here. It, because really, I mean, what I could probably do with this CBT, you know, around the fear and, and changing the, just that pattern of thought, maybe, 
um, because last week, you know, when I, when I feel that scared about the, fo- the noises the following day, I think, Julie, just get a grip of this. And I don't know whether sometimes it's when I feel already stressed that it's mm-hmm. just that exacerbates it or whether that exacerbates the stress. I just like the chicken and the egg, isn't it? Could be, yeah, it could be a spiral, but definitely uh, try to take whatever steps you can to reduce reduce uh, stress is definitely not a bad thing. Um, yeah, maybe going for a walk unless unless it's a nice day and then everyone else is going for a walk and triggering you. But, <laughs> Don't uh, you know what? I, I, no one triggers me while I'm out walking. Honestly, I walk, oh, I walk twice God. a day. Yeah, I walk twice a day with the dogs, but I go for the jog. Um, I and I know what my triggers are in the house and, and outside, so we'll just deal with it. But it was when <laughs> it was when I saw that building where I just I, I, that thought of just shook me. Yeah. It really did shake me. But now I'm okay because I I think okay when I pull up in the car to go in, I just put my books in. So mm-hmm. I'm dealing with it. And I think Julie, they're not there overnight. night. They will just chill. You know, just chill in the night. So it sort of makes you grateful for the peaceful times that you do have as well. I think. Yeah, right. We should definitely be grateful for for any of that, for any, <laughs> any quiet time. <laughs> yeah. Have you um has this has this kind of um you know with your social work have you has this kind of helped you maybe I don't know if you ever had a chance to recognize it in people that you've been helping in your kind of day job or do do you meet um. Do you, like, do you meet the, the actual uh, families that you're helping? Yeah, I do. And do you know what, Adil, do you remember that programme, 2020? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was like a big turning point, wasn't it, that programme? Yes, <laughs> yes. There was an interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there was a girl on it, wasn't there, and she couldn't speak to her own mum. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I yeah, totally yeah. remember. It comes up on the podcast sometimes, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, like I, I'm so grief. I feel so grateful every day that that's, that's not something that I, I struggle with. But the, the, I worked with a family, and the, the there was a young girl. She was 16, and she used to scream every time. And that she lived with her nan, her grandma, mm-hmm. and every time her grandma spoke to her, she she just scream, get out, get out of your room, don't come near me. And I was just the more I, I, I listened to her. I just said to her, I said, what, what is it about your nan? Is it a voice? And she said, yeah. So I brought her into the office and I showed her this, I showed her that programme. And she just burst out crying. And she said, that's how I feel about my nan. I know. Wasn't that powerful? Yeah. Wow. I, I, I was just, and I just thought, you know what? Like that job done. She, she yeah. knew. She knew that's what it was, and she knew what misophonia was then. So, and do you know what? It took her nan a while to to um, come round. She she was sort of like old school, yeah. like, and um, and she she just couldn't understand it. She's saying, "I've never heard anything so stupid." Um, but I I just worked with her and and, and said, "No, this is real." And she loves you, Benny. She loves you so much because her nan thought that she hated her. And I, she actually loves you so much, but it's cr- and it, it's so cruel, isn't it? Really, when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was able to like explain, and there's been there's probably been three or four families that I've worked with, and the children, I've had it. Um. And you brought her up every time. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you sort of know, don't you? you of well, course. As you talk, and you think, oh, okay. Um. And and they say she hates the sounds of this or he hates the sounds of that. And then you just do a little bit more exploring. And and it's like you're just giving them a gift. Yeah, absolutely. And they're yeah, that's that's um, yeah, that's amazing. That's um um yeah. That's what I want to ask. I I mean you're in such a perfect position to change you know, change people's lives, not in just even the the usual great stuff that social workers do, but you have this extra superpower, I think, to really change people's lives that's that's amazing yeah it, that that 2021 one though i just i couldn't believe it and and she just 
like she just burst out crying. It was like a, just a huge relief for her. Because yeah. how how do you actually say to someone, don't speak to me because your voice goes yeah. through, you know? Right, and it's worse when you're a kid. You have no idea. You have no idea how to uh, express it. So it must, yeah, yeah. it must. I mean, imagine what the uh, grandma must have felt. I mean, yeah, that's I, great. I think, it, it's so hard for families, isn't it? A deal, you know, for family members, it must be really, really difficult for them to hear things sometimes. Yeah. You know, like don't breathe. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't bear the noise of you breathing. Don't breathe. Or just so awful. Right. It's really, really awful. I, and like the big it's the cruelest thing isn't it really um and those you love the most trigger you the most so that's what they say um, yeah absolutely yeah. yeah this was uh that was that was super <laughs> super powerful and we're getting up uh uh up to the up to the hour um yeah kind of maybe maybe it was actually a good good way to end it but i did i didn't want to kind of just ask if you had any other um Anything else you want to you want to tell people uh, that that you've learned about mis, uh, misophonia or or you know to people who may not may know may not know that they have it uh, or, or just just any kind of last words? Do you know what I I would just say? Always be honest. Don't ever hold it in. You just need to be honest. It, it's because it, it it could just it could make a massive difference to your life. If you're honest with someone, especially in the workplace, and fight, fight for your, your rights, really, because who knows where we'll be in 10 years with this. Um, it, it, it could be a, a recognised thing. And, and I would just say fight for it, because you don't deserve to be sit, to be sat somewhere in, in total stress, do you? Um, especially if you're in the workplace. Um, and I would just say, always be honest. And I, I've learned a lot, a deal in my life about this, about myself, about others. I'm still learning and I'm nearly 50. Um, and I just think that we, we just do the best we can, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Every day seems like a struggle and we just do the best we can. Some days are better than others. And uh, yeah, and we're all, we're all, yeah, we're always learning. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely still learning. Um, yeah, those, those the great, 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 great words. Can I just say this as well? I don't know whether you know, you listen or you know of Byron Katie. She, she uh, does, but she does something called the way that, yeah, I think that's come up on a previous episode. Um, yeah. I'll and find her out for you. Yeah. Yeah. But she asks, she, she's, she's really interesting as well. She asks the question because it, it's about overthinking things and, and, and where your mind can take you and she asked the question who would you be without the thought and and I always think who would I be without the, the misophonia who would I be yeah and it's my actually my goal in life to just be that person and and to actually minimize misophonia so small that that it's it doesn't affect me so much. Who would I be without the misophonia, and who mm. am I without it? Do, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, gives you a goal to uh, to to shoot for. Or it gives yeah. you it gives you somebody. To, it gives you a um a, 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 a yeah a person a profile a user a, a person profile to think about that to aspire to basically. Yeah. And you yeah. just kind of try to work towards that. Yeah, definitely. Well, this is uh, yeah, Julie. This is this is great. How do you, um, how do you feel? You were nervous at the beginning. <laughs> do you know what? I feel I feel like it's this has been therapy for me. <laughs> do you, great. Honestly, I feel really grateful for for this conversation. Thank you so much. Actually, one thing I wanted to ask, uh, just real quick, was like, do you know anyone else who has misophonia like around you, you know, or anyone that you like a friend or somebody that you you know met and you're still in touch with? Um. I I know a couple of people that I work with, like I say, um, and I think my brother might have developed a little bit of it after he had a stroke, uh, um, but not to the not to the degree that I had it. No, right. I don't really a deal. Yeah, um, yeah. I know people who have got maybe one or two triggers, but not not growing triggers like I. I feel like I I just develop year on year. 
yeah, um, yeah. I know some people that might have a breathing one or some someone that might um, be triggered by eat, eating sounds, you know, around the table, but not not to the extent that I have it and other people that we, we read about. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, okay, yeah, just curious. Cool, right. well, thanks again, Julie. It's good, oh, so. thank you. Thank you, Julie. Fascinating story there at the end about that granddaughter. We really dug deep into some feelings in this conversation. It was awesome. If you're enjoying the shows, don't forget to leave a little review in iTunes or wherever you're listening. Music, as always, is by Moby. And until next week, wishing you peace and quiet.